Okay. Before I start, do you, are there any questions that you have that have come up between now and the last meeting? I don't think so. We mostly just wrapped up our um, journey map and personas, which you saw a little bit of last time with our discovery research, but it was a part of our latest deliverable. So we revisited it with um, stuff that we learned from the usability testing and made an additional persona and empathy maps and whatnot. So basically just finishing the last of the deliverables that we need before we move into prototyping. So I think right now um, the learning how to use Figma as uh, using the pajamas UI kit as you mm -hmm. do, uh, would be the most helpful for us. Cause I think that that's our next step. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Also the, um, from a quick glance, that document looks great by the way. So, <laughs> all right. So I created a Figma file that we should now all have access to if you, and I'll share my screen. Um, please interrupt me at, at any point. Oh, can you enable participant screen sharing? Okay, you should be able to now. Okay, yeah, cool, great, got it. All right, so the file that you should open up when you get into Figma looks like this, and you can just duplicate, well, you could, Originally, I was going to have you duplicate the entire file, so you would add that to your drafts, um, but you can also duplicate in here. It doesn't really matter. As long as you don't, I'll just name this one mine, and then we won't get confused. Okay. Um, before I start, have any of you used Figma before? Yes. Yep, I have. Um, yes. Okay. Cool. All right, so you know typically like how to navigate around it. What we'll be doing specifically is just looking at like the component library and how to use that and how that matches up with the actual pajamas code as well. They make it pretty easy to do that at GitLab, which is great. So you're gonna go to this file. It's, um, it just brings up open another Figma file. I already have it in my libraries, but it should show up as component library if you were to save it as a library and just let me know when you've done that. When I click it, it says we couldn't find that one. I wonder if I need to duplicate it and make it. Oh, no, it's just because I added the wrong link probably. Okay, hold on. How about try going to I'll try I'll send you to the actual pajamas website instead. Um try this link and see if that once you get there, there's a links here and you can click on pajamas UI kit there and it should bring you to the Figma. Cool, I've got it open. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so we're all in there. Can you add that? Can you save that as a library? Because it already has components or I'm wondering if you have the right permissions, you should be able to. How do you save it as a library? I think you should have an option in this dropdown. When you click on, there's a component library dropdown and then it should be up there. 
I don't know if we... I'm going to try to duplicate this draft and then see if that works. Yeah, try maybe that would work. Um, hmm. But the goal for this is to be able to just open up any new like Figma file and be able to use these components, right? Yeah, so I want, so this file that you're seeing here, the pajamas UI kit, that ha it has all the components saved in here. Like these are each components, but I want them to be in your, they're called assets so that you can use them in any file that you open, you're able to access these in assets. Okay, I don't think duplicating this doing the trick here though. Mm. I, um, what I did was I duplicated the file, then I published it myself into one of my workspaces. So maybe that works. And now is it showing up in like your libraries in the other files? Okay, so. Wait, okay. I, uh, <laughs> one second. Let's see. I've never actually had to use the libraries tab before, so it's kind of confusing to to go through. So I'm in the file that you provided right here. Yeah. And let's, so then to access the, okay, yeah, assets, and then there's a library icon. Oh, interesting. I don't see it right there. Hmm. I don't know why that would happen. Um, I mean, I'm on my personal account, so maybe. But you should be able to add a library. Yeah, regardless. so I published it and then maybe I got to restart this file really quickly. Let me see if that works. Oh, if you don't see it also, it might just not be switched on. So if you go, whenever you that file reloads, if you go to the little book thing on the side, you oh, might just have to switch yeah. it on. Is that it? Um, uh, I am unable to switch it on. It says enable, but I can't click on that button for some reason. Is it? Do you still have the component library draft I open? I do. Huh? One second. I'm going to. But this is already really cool because I've never <laughs> even seen this interface. So it's like, it's interesting to, to see it. I'm wondering also, do you want to just share your screen, Alex? Yeah, sure. Uh, Figma. Okay, so I'm here. Yeah. Then uh, this is the one. Yeah. But see, I can't click on the enable. Try duplicating this I whole think the it... top cap. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I don't know if it matters. I'm seeing it with a view only, like copy. So I don't know if that's like a reason why. Um, like it might just be, it. I think it might be because I had already enabled the, the library on that other file. Maybe try going to assets now. <gasps> yep, there it there is. There you yes. go, okay. All right, so to retract, all of those steps, I'm gonna write it in that board. Um, so you definitely need to make a, a, a full duplicate of that test file and I'm gonna go back up here. So you're all gonna wanna go up to this little title up here and just say duplicate. So it's gonna be your own, it will be saved in your own drafts in Figma. And then once you do that, you'll want to open up the component library and duplicate to your drafts. 
So you'll have that as your own draft. I'll write that right here. Duplicate this in your drafts. And then you wanna go back. I believe it's still in the title. It's you go back up and it's um, published library. That should be in that duplicated library, published library. And then when you go back to the, what did I call it? Tufts capstone. File, go to assets and, and then the book icon, which apparently means library and then switch the toggle on. Let me know if that works. I think that's the steps that we just took. I will say when I go to publish library for, for my own copy that I just duplicated from the original, it's giving me the options for like free, only copy the styles or like professional copy everything. So just do free. Okay. Yeah. And do I not change anything? Do I not like once I do that, do I just not change anything on the it shouldn't change anything on you mean for the library like will it change anything i think like when i click on the free option it's giving me like um the list of everything and like check marks and do i should to like publish style so i don't know if i should like oh if you can select them all then keep them all selected oh too late i already just i had only had one selected okay well we'll see what happens thank you sorry okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Also, you can make your account educational just by going to like a link and entering your school email and then everything is free pretty much. Oh my goodness. Well, oh. I should do that definitely. Yeah. I don't know how they make sure you're not using it because they don't ask for your graduation day, I think. So it's like, how do they make sure you're not infinitely using this free Figma? Okay, nice. That's good to know. So maybe after this call, you could do that too if you can't access everything. Um, I'm gonna just give a really quick overview about this whole thing that I'm writing here. Basically what a lot of companies do with design systems is they m try to match what is in the code with what you're using in the design program. So for example, in Figma, with this button I brought in as a component, in the code, which is on our pajamas website, we show each button type is uh, primary, secondary, or tertiary, and then you have default, confirm, danger. And these are all different variants and categories that you apply on the code side. and these actually appear in Figma as well. In this bar over here, you can change the category, which would change, if we're looking at this single button, it would change that, the um, kind of like the, the appearance of that and the priority of how important that button is. And then you could change it to, at the top level to danger, like let's say that you're doing a, you're deleting something and you need it to be destructive. So that the, what would you call these uh, attributes that you're seeing here directly align with the code. And it just helps you get a little bit more of an understanding of how that would be implemented on the front end. GitLab engineers like know how to do all that. But if you, if you were to develop whatever you're going to design, it would help you figure that out. All right. I'm going to hop to this now. Um, do you want me to just recreate this and talk through it and you can follow it or how would you want to go about this? I think that would be really helpful. Yeah. I'm not sure what other modes we could do this, but I think that will be a great beginning place. Yeah. And I think if we want to go back, we can and like do it, follow along, do it ourselves. We can always watch a recording. So I think that's a good start. Okay. All right. Let's do that. So I just took a screenshot of this screen because I know this is part of the onboarding flow. Cause so I figured it would be a good one to use. I'm going to move this off. Um, 
All right. So the first thing I would start with always is when you create a new frame and you click frame, you can choose your sizes over here. I always use desktop because it's just like a standard size. I'm deleting that because this is the one I already created. And then for the screen itself, I always start with navigation. So if you are in assets and you go to navigation, you get a sidebar. This is defaults to the sidebar for a project. Um, for this example, I think we are in a project, so it makes sense, but you can change this if you're in the admin area or a group, like it kind of changes everything, which is really nice. And then the other thing I'm gonna add is the header for the nav. You can search type over here in assets to do that. So I'm gonna type in header. And then they have all different sizes depending on the screen size that you're working with. Um, so I'm using Excel, which makes sense because my screen size is 1440 width, and this is for 1200 pixels and above. So I can just drag it and it will resize like, uh, it already has like auto resize in it. So nothing bad should happen to it. Um, and then for this one specifically, we're in CICD. So one change I would make to this is I'm just double clicking here to get onto the right layer. So I see this is expanded. If I make it default, that's not what I wanna do. I'm gonna first highlight these three items and delete them, which actually just hides the layer. It doesn't actually delete them. And then I'm making this, this one default. This is super annoying. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm not making a default. I'm gonna make it not bold. <laughs> that's gonna be my hacky way of doing it. And then for CICD, at least I can expand it. And then I have to type in CICD, getting rid of this badge because it doesn't apply. For the icon, we have each navigation has its own icon. So if you have, you first have to install the product icons library, which I'll get you the link for. And then once you do, if you type in CICD, it just comes up with a rocket. Um, the colors change a bit here. So the icons are always gray 700. This comes in the component library. Um, we scale all of our colors. So any color family like grays, blues, purple, whatever, we always have go from like gray 50 to gray 950. And just for our icons in general, for design system, we use gray 700. And then for our text, we always use gray 900. So you'll see those two colors a lot. Um, but for this example, so we have pipelines and editor and jobs, schedules. Nope, oh, that was a spelling error. And then I don't need any of these other sub menu items. So I'm going to highlight and delete, and everything's going to move for me, thankfully. And then I'm going to make editor itself selected because I know that's what I'm on. All right, <laughs> now that we've done all of that, we're gonna start with the breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna look that up in the library. We have these, our spacing typically we use, um, you'll see in a lot of websites they, websites, they use grids. So it's a lot, the spacing is very uh, consistent because of that. So the page layout we use is usually 16 pixels with everything. So I'm gonna bump it down 16 and to the right 16. Quick tip, if you wanna make it easier for you to, for your nudge amounts to actually equal eight pixels each time, you can change them here. They default to 10. So you would have to change them to make it easier to move by eight. Sorry, can you repeat that process a little bit? Yes. Uh, and also like nudging. I'm not sure. I, I know you can achieve that with like using the arrow keys. Is that is that correct? Or... Oh, okay. So yeah. So nudging, you have to hold down shift. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then use your arrow key, whichever way you're moving it. So if okay. I put this like right in the corner here on this um, layout 
and I hold down shift and I use the down arrow twice, it would nudge it eight pixels each time I use that. And then same thing with the right. How did you change the nudge amount again? If you go up to the, whatever this is called, file okay. menu, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then um, preferences and then nudge amount. Nudge amount. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. And then, okay. So a small nudge is without holding shift and then yes. nudge is holding shift. Got it. Yeah. And typically I, I like keeping the small nudge at one just because like when I'm in really, really close scenarios, I can use nudging by one allows me to go by each square in this grid. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. And then I'm just going to copy again what I'm seeing over here. So Tufts University, Figma demo and pipeline. Oh, nope. Pipeline editor. Um, you can see that there are some differences like the breadcrumbs I had that I was looking on at that screen don't have these avatars in them. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the layers, they you see avatars. Whenever I press delete, so I'm going to press delete here, see how it just hides the layer. So that's all it's doing. You can always bring it back if you want. It doesn't like remove it fully from the component. Cool. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one, but I'll just use the hide button over here. It does the same thing. <clears throat> okay. Next thing here is a drop down. Drop downs are <laughs> took me a little bit to figure this out in our library. They actually come from buttons. So if you take out a default button here and you change the type to a drop down, you'll get a drop down. Um, I think it said master and I think it had an icon too. All of our buttons and drop downs, they come with a bunch of different things you can turn on, like an emoji or an icon. And all of that can be shown in the layers panel over to the left. These are the things that I was deleting, like in the breadcrumbs, for example. So if I turn the icon left on, you can't see it because the icon is white for some reason. So in the selection colors, I would change this to, I think it's gray 700, but I'm not even sure. Mm, it might be gray 500 because it looks like it's a little lighter than the text. So I'll change it to gray 500. That was a guess to be honest. And then I think it was like merge something. What's that shape? Or is it branch? Nope, it's branch, just kidding. Okay, so now it looks like this. Uh, sorry, with the drop down, how did you get it to have um, an icon as well as the text? Because I'm trying to go through the different types and it yep. seems. Yeah, if you, so if, when you add the drop down, yeah. if you go over to your la layers panel on the left, uh -huh. if you expand the um, default component, you should see a bunch of other layers you can turn on. Right, and you turn on the icon. Yes, icon left is what it's called. Got it. Okay, perfect. And then when that icon comes up, for whatever reason, it's white. So it looks yeah. like it's not there. You just have to change the selection color to gray 500. Is there a quick way for you to know which um, color you're hovering over? Because I, I, right now I'm clicking them and then seeing what number is next to them. Is there a better way? Um, you'd have to click on the... Uh, well, from, I guess you could say, if you're looking at the full dropdown itself, it gives you, Figma gives you a summary of which colors are used in the entire symbol. Uh huh. So that's probably the quickest way. Otherwise uh -huh. you have to click on each layer. All good, okay. Sounds good, all right. Okay, yeah, not easy. I can also give you like a quick sheet of what, what colors match with what like icons are this color, text is usually this color and stuff. Um, okay, let's go this one. So there's this weird like square thing, which I think says something about the YAML being correct. Unfortunately, we don't have components for that. So in this case, I would just create a rectangle and um, I'll show you 
one other skill that would be really helpful for this. So in these cases, if there's not components already created, I think I X'd out of that project. Figment demo, okay. Okay, so if, you, if you've ever used inspect, you would know what this is. I'm in Chrome right now. If I use inspect, I can figure out all of the properties of this single shape so that I can recreate it easily. So if I, um, you go to inspect and then you use this little cursor shape to be able to click on different things. So I'm gonna click on the square. Then I'm gonna go to computed over here to the right. This is actually showing you all the code that's like underlying uh -huh. underneath it. So one of the things I would look at specifically is the radius um, of the shape, which I don't even know if I'm seeing it right here. Oh yeah, it's four pixels. So you can filter this whole list down by showing whatever. So that will give me, now I'll change that rectangle to have four pixel radius for all the sides. Mm -hmm. And then another good thing about this is it shows you the color that you're supposed to be using. Um, so the background color here, it's always shown in RGB first, but if you hold shift, is it shift? Nope, <laughs> you just have to click on it apparently. <laughs> if you click on the color, it gives you the, um, the color that we use in the design system. So what gray 10 in this case, but it also gives you the hex oh. value. So if you ever oh. needed the hex, it would show you there. So in this case, I know I need a rectangle that has radius of four and uses gray 10 as the background color. So I'm gonna go back here, change the radius to four, change this fill color to gray 10. And then I, I just know that all of our borders are always gray 100. So I, I'm gonna change the stroke to gray 100. That's another thing I can give you on the cheat sheet. And then again, another thing I know is that a lot of our spacing typically is like 16 pixels from the other thing, from the other element. So I'm just making this all 16. Sorry, so you put the background as gray 100, even though you cannot see it? I put the background as gray 10 Great. and then I made the border um like the stroke, the stroke I made yeah. that gray 100 I think in inspect it would show me um border bottom color for example like if I go to this it should be so here we go so border gray 100 is the border color I was saying because I'm familiar with the design system our borders are always gray 100 so that's how I, just, I was just making an assumption that it was that. Cool. And I'm not able to see, when I'm trying to fill the color on the right side, I cannot see the um, the design system colors for some reason. Oh, like in this menu? Yeah. Um, that should come up with your oh. component library. Oh, I see. I have to press the four dots, I think. That's right there. And then I Oh, can't... OK. Uh, is that oh yes yes so it comes up as this like square thing and it's a style yeah and then you search for it and oh, you can it. search for it too yes and another cool thing is you can show all of these instead of a list you can show them as um a grid so each family like neutral is all in a grid like this, it just doesn't show you the name unless you hover over them, which I don't like. So that's why I don't use it like that. Gotcha. So again, you did the background as gray 10 and then the stroke as gray 100. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let me try to add the, try to follow along to make sure. Uh, You're doing great. <laughs> stroke. Okay, and then let's see what else we got here. Pipeline. I know we're pretty much over time already. Just wanted to see, do you want me to keep going or do you want me to like record this on my own and share it to you? 
Well, if you have time, I have some time right now, and this is this is super fun right now, so I'm happy to keep going. But I mean, okay. everyone else got to run. I'm... Yeah, I'll keep going. Okay, cool. Unfortunately, I have to go in the next five minutes or so, and I think I'm the one recording it right now. So then, once I go, is there um, a way for me to make someone else host? I'm not usually in charge. I'll figure it out. Is it recorded like on the cloud, or is it recorded locally? I'm not sure how that is. I think it's locally right now because I didn't know which one to pick. Cool. Um, oh, okay. But um, if we have both pieces of it somehow, it should be fine. Yeah, I can continue recording after you leave. If that's, yeah. But do you still have to transfer your host permissions? Yeah, I'll work on that right now. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. Great. All right, let's see. I was doing this thing. So all of the um, all of our icons are in a separate library, so they won't come with the component library. Mm -hmm. But again, I have to give you the link to that. But in this example, like I saw that there was a check here because it was checking if the pipeline YAML is valid. So I would just filter by check and then bring it over. All of our icons are scaled at. Um, how do I say this? 